Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. Your word is the truth. We receive it written in our heart and mind this day. We take hold of it, we do it, we apply it, and we'll see the fruit of it. We praise you for all that you accomplish in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. Today we're going to share with you on a subject we haven't shared with since we've been here. It's called How to Be Honored by the Lord. How to be honored by the Lord. We need to be honored by the Lord. And there's things that the Word says that are prerequisites for you to be honored by the Lord. Of course, He's the one who's going to honor you if you meet His conditions. 1 Chronicles 29, verse 12. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. Where do riches and honor come from? They come from the Lord. He is the one who is the ruler and reigns over all. There are things that we are to do to see God's honor come forth in our life, and there are things that we're not to do so we see his honor come forth. Otherwise, we would be dishonoring him, and we would not see blessings come upon us in our life. In Leviticus, we begin in chapter 19, in verse 15. The Bible says, You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness thou shalt judge thy neighbor. You are not to honor the person of the mighty. When it talks about someone that's mighty, this is talking about someone who is great, or it can mean someone who is distinguished, or someone who has importance, what this particular word means. Someone that's you know, considered an important person. Should we honor the person of someone that appears to be important? No. God is no respecter of persons. Why does the church seem to want to honor all these people? They want to honor all these ministers. They want to honor all these people's accomplishments and all these things. Who's the one who's doing the work? God is. God's doing it all. We're nothing. We're just a vessel. Where does all the glory go? To the Lord. Is any flesh to have any glory whatsoever? No. Therefore, why are so many honoring people in the church? It shouldn't be done. We've got all these things that are going on in churches, people honoring their pastors and all these people and so forth. It's really not of the Lord. We're not to honor the person. It doesn't matter who they are, what their importance is. We're to honor God and give all the glory to Him. The glory does not go to any man for anything that he has done. We see in verse 32, <clears throat> Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. This is talking about honoring people as they get older in their age. God wants to honor them. God wants to, us to respect them. He wants us to minister to them and treat them with respect and honor. We're not to have a negative attitude towards them because they're getting old whatsoever. No. We're to honor them and have the fear of the Lord before us. In Numbers, chapter 22, Numbers 22, verse 17. Here's where Balak was trying to get Balaam to curse the Israelites. And he set him up with a, a deal for him to get all this money. He said, I'll promote thee into very great honor. He's going to give him great honor. And he's going to give all this riches and so forth. And I'll do whatsoever thou sayest unto me. Come therefore, I pray thee, and curse me this people. Is that what God wants us to do? No, we do nothing in order to gain any honor from man. We want the honor from God. That means we can't be compromising in any way. We can't be compromising for what someone would want us to do. We can't be compromising in our family. We can't be compromising in our job. We can't be compromising in anything that we do. God wants us to walk the straight and narrow way, do what is right in the sight of the Lord, and don't do anything to try to gain honor or glory from someone else. We do everything unto the Lord, and if we're obedient to do things according to God's ways, then we're going to be blessed by the Lord. We don't want to try to get any gain of honor in some way from anybody or by doing something that's unrighteous. We want God. God's the one who will bring forth His blessings upon us as He honors us. In Deuteronomy chapter 5, because we honor the people right. Deuteronomy 5, verse 16. Honor thy father and thy mother, <clears throat> as the Lord hath commanded thee, 
that thy days may be prolonged. Look at the promise that comes when you honor your father and mother. Your days will be prolonged. It may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Long life might go well with you. That's good life. That's what God wants. He wants to bring blessings upon us. But we must honor our father and our mother. We see over in 1 Samuel chapter 2. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 27. Here a man of God comes and comes to Eli, and he says to him, Eli was the priest at that time, he says, Thus saith the Lord, did I plainly <coughs> appear, <coughs> appear into the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? Is that I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer him upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? Did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Of course he did. He says, Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at mine offerings, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy sons above me, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Why was he honoring his sons above him? Because his sons were vile. They were not restraining them from evil. They were having fornication with the, pe with the women, the prostitutes at the temple. They were doing evil things. They should have been fired and eliminated. But what's it say? You're honoring your sons above me. You're making yourself fat with the chiefest of all the offerings. In other words, apparently these sons must have been on the payroll and getting some of the offerings and it was making him fat because they were taking in the money. That shows that part of his motivation for doing this was for money. He didn't want to rebuke these sons. Of course, he didn't want to restrain him from evil, it later it talks about. And he was not honoring him. That shows you that we cannot honor anything above the Lord. And he says, don't honor, you're honoring your sons above me. That means you can never put your family before the Lord. Can't put your sons, can't put your daughter, mother, father, doesn't matter who it is. We've got to put the Lord first place in all that we do. And then he says, Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed unto thy house, and the father of thy house should walk before me forever. But now the Lord saith, Be it far from me, for them that honor me I will honor. When you honor God, or you honor him by doing his word and the things that he says to do, God says he's going to honor you. And they that despise me, those are the ones that don't honor me, they're going to be lightly esteemed. God's not going to do much for them because they're not honoring the Lord. If you honor God, then God says that he will honor you. We see another scripture in 1 Samuel chapter 9. <coughs> in verse 6, it says this, He said unto him, Behold now, there is in the city a man of God, and he's an honorable man. Why was he considered to be an honorable one? All that he saith cometh surely to pass. Hey, this guy is speaking the word of God. He's not speaking wrong words. He's speaking right words. He's speaking things that the law of, align with the word of God or what the Lord would give him. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to be men and women of God that are going to be honorable, considered honorable before the Lord. And that we're going to learn to speak what God wants. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. He wants you to speak right words. Remember, the ones that speak wrong words, they're going to be snared. You're going to be snared and taken captive by the words of your mouth. The Lord wants you and I to speak right words. You learn to speak right words, you're going to be considered an honorable person before the Lord. We see in 1 Samuel 22, in verse 14, Another statement is we're seeing these principles of what's going to bring honor from God in your life to you. Here in 1 Samuel 22, 14, Ahimelech answered the king and said, Who is so faithful among all thy servants as David, which is the king's son-in-law, and goeth at thy bidding, and is honorable in thine house? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about someone who was faithful to do the things that he was supposed to do. He was faithful. He went at his bidding. He was obedient. He followed what he was supposed to do. What's God looking for in us? To be faithful, to be obedient. He wants us to, we talked about in the last two messages about being obedient to the word, according to our will, making the decision to choose the way of the Lord. God wants us to be faithful and obedient and do the things that he says. And we're going to be considered to be honorable 
in the Lord's house. So the principle carries over to us. 1 Kings chapter 3. In 1 Kings chapter 3, it speaks here about Solomon. And Solomon says, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. He got what he needed in order to carry out the ministry of the Lord, so that there was none like thee unto thee, but neither after thee shall arise any other, any like unto thee. But I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. That shows you if you pursue the things that God would want you to have, which of course he wanted, needed wisdom, he needed knowledge to carry out what he was supposed to do, especially to fulfill the call of God and do things that God wants you to do. God will give you what you have need of to fulfill the things that he has for you to do, but he'll also honor you. He gave him riches and honor on top of that because he wanted to do what the Lord wanted him to do. If you have a heart for the Lord, and you want to follow after him and obey him and seek and find out what he wants you to do, to get what you have need of from him so you can walk right and serve him acceptably, God will do the same thing. He's no respecter of persons. He'll bring riches and honor unto you as well. We see in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 17. <clears throat> Here it speaks of Jehoshaphat. It says, Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel. Remember, he was of Judah. Israel was, eight, ten tribes were of Israel that split. Judah were the two other tribes. Israel rebelled against God, and they were walking wrong. He placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah, set garrisons in the land of Judah and the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken. <coughs> he says, and the Lord was with the Jehoshaphat, because he walked in the first ways of his father David. And he didn't seek unto Balaam, he didn't seek unto other idols. He sought to the Lord. So here it says he's walking in the ways of Father David, which was walking in the ways of the Word. He sought to the Lord God of his fathers. He walked in his commandments. That's what God wants for us, not after the doings of Israel. If you and I will seek the Lord, if we walk in his commandments, what happens? He said, therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. And all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presence, and he had riches and honor in abundance. Because you do the right thing, God will bring blessings upon us. He got honored. And notice it says his kingdom was established. You and I will be established in ruling and reigning over our enemies, and God's riches and honor and blessing will come to us if you and I walk in his ways, if we keep his commandments, we do the things that he wants us to do, and we seek after the Lord. We see he goes on, and he says his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. That's what God wants. He wants your heart lifted up in the ways of the Lord, not in the ways of yourself or not in the ways of the world. He wants your heart after the ways of the Lord. Remember, David was a man after his own heart, after the, the heart of God. And he talks about how he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. That was where all the idolatry was going on. He removed anything that would cause them not to be able to serve the Lord. We come down to verse 9. He says, He taught in Judah had the book of the law of the Lord with him and went throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. So he got the word out to the people. That's what God wants. He wants you and I to do the same thing. He wants your heart to be lifted up in the ways of the Lord. He wants you to preach the gospel and get the word out to people. They need to be taught the truth of God's word. The fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. When you please the Lord, God will make even his enemies at peace with you, which is what happened. The fear of God came upon them all, and they had no wars. They were protected. They were abiding in peace. This is because he walked in the way of the Lord, and so he was honored by the Lord. We see over in Psalms, Psalms 15. Psalms 15, verse 4. This is in the midst of, we go back to verse 1, where it talks about who's going to abide in thy tabernacle, and who's going to dwell on thy holy hill? In the very presence of God. He says, He that walks uprightly 
He that works righteousness, he that speaks truth in his heart, he that doesn't backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is condemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. <clears throat> Who gets honored? The ones that fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord, because of that you'll depart from evil. The fear of the Lord, you'll hate evil. By the fear of the Lord, you'll keep his commandments. You'll walk in the ways of the Lord. You will not want to do anything that is contrary to the way of the word of God. And those are the ones that are going to abide in the tabernacle and dwell in his holy hill, praise God. Psalms 26, verse 1. He says, I've walked in mine integrity. That's what God wants for us. I've trusted also in the Lord. When you walk in the upright integrity, walking and doing what the Word wants, right in, or the heart right before God, and trust in the Lord, you're not going to slide. You're not going to slip. You're not going to fall backwards. You're going to move forward. You're going to prosper and be blessed. He says, examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins. The reins speaks of your emotions and affection. It's of the soulish realm. And also my heart. He's going to test you to find out, are you going to walk in his ways or not? For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I've walked in thy truth. He's totally got his eyes on the Lord and thinking about what God's loving kindness and all things it'll do. And he's walking in the truth, being a doer of the word. He says, I've not sat with vain persons. He stays away from vain persons. Neither will I go in with the dissemblers. Those are the ones that the hypocrites speaks of. People that are really hypocrites. What this, or some of the translations translate it that way. I've hated the congregation of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. He's not going to compromise and fellowship with people that aren't going to walk right with the Lord. That's what God wants for us, of course. I will wash my hands in innocence so that I will compass thine altar. Otherwise, he'd be sure that he's right before God, confessing his sins, getting washed by the blood of Jesus. So as he comes to the altar of the worship and praise God, that he's right before the Lord. That I may publish with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. He's, he's wanting to do what God wants. Get the truth out. Publish the word. Tell of the wondrous works of the Lord. Lord, I've loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwelleth. God wants us. We meet all these conditions just like this guy's walking. It's shown in his walk, isn't it? Been his fruit. He's the habitation of his house, the place where his honor dwells. The place where God's honor dwells is the place with the manifest presence of God, which comes for those that have met the conditions. That's what God wants to bring forth in our life. Meet the conditions. God's honor will be there manifested in your life. Psalm 66, verse 2. Sing forth the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. This word honor is the main one word for honor uh, that we see. This is the same word. This is why Young's translates it the same way. Praise ye the honor of his name and make his, ye honorable his praise. See, God wants you to realize that when you're giving glory and honor and praise, you're singing unto him, you're praising and worshiping him, you're giving honor unto him. You're not just going through the motions. You're not just uh, doing something that's religious. You're not just singing some, something just to sing songs. You're ministering unto the Lord. That's why God wants you to participate in singing the songs from your heart, praising and worshiping God and ministering unto Him, giving honor unto Him. You know, you don't want to just be going through the motions. You want to be ministering unto the Lord. We see it brings honor to Him. Psalms 91 it speaks of those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High are going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You walk in His ways, you're going to be protected. You're going to declare the Lord, He's your refuge, your fortress, and you're going to trust in Him. God will deliver you. He'll deliver you from every attack of the enemy, snare of the fowler, the noisome, noisome pestilence. He'll protect you, covers you with His feathers, and under His wings you'll trust. His truth, which is the Word, will be your shield. You speak the Word and your buckler against the enemies. You won't be afraid for the terror by night, or the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, or destruction that wastes at noonday. The devil works around the clock, but you're not going to be afraid whatsoever. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. Why? Because you're going to be using your sword smiting the enemies, because you're going to be wielding that sword against the enemies, and they're going to be put underfoot. It shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall behold and see the reward of the wicked. He says, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. You've got to make him your habitation, your dwelling place. You're going to walk in his ways. 
You're going to do what he wants you to do. Then he says, no evil will befall you. No plague will come nigh your dwelling. That's great blessings. His angels will have charge over you to keep you in all your ways. It says they'll bear you up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And you're going to tread upon the lion and the adder. That's treading the devil underfoot. The young lion, the dragon, thou shalt trample underfoot. And because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. You see, you set your love on him because you're walking in his ways, you're doing what he says. God says, I'm going to deliver you. I will set him on high because he's known my name. You're going to speak in the name of the Lord, and God's going to set you on high. He will, shall call upon me, and I will answer him. He's going to respond to your prayer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. God manifesting himself to you is his honor coming to you in your life. He will deliver you. He will honor you. He will be there in trouble. He will manifest himself. He will bring forth victory in your life because we do the things that he says. We see in Psalms 149, Psalms 149 over in verse 6, it says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand. You're going to praise God and ministering unto him, and you're going to have that sword. You're going to be smiting those enemies and speaking forth the word to bring the promises into being. What are you going to do? You're going to execute vengeance upon the heathen, punishments upon the people. As you're speaking God's word and you're taking dominion and entering into spiritual warfare, you're going to destroy the works of the enemy. Binding their kings with chains and nobles and fetters of iron, you and I are to bind the enemy and stop his works, tie him up. You're executing upon them the judgment that's written. This honor have all his saints. God gives you honor to be able to do the things that he wants, which causes, allows him to execute his works. But he's going to use you. He's going to use you. You and I have the honor to speak forth his word, to see him bring forth his destruction of the enemies in your life. We have to realize, entering into spiritual warfare, praising God, putting the that two-edged sword, speaking forth with the word of God out of our mouth, taking dominion. That is you entering into the spiritual warfare and that honor has God given to us. It's actually an honor to execute the judgments and to engage in the warfare against our enemies. We see in Proverbs chapter 3. That's why we need to be involved in spiritual warfare. People don't want to gain, gain, enter into it. They're making a great mistake. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. When you honor the Lord, he's going to honor you, isn't he? This is the tithe. Honor the Lord with your substance, the first fruits, that's the first, that's the tithe, of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. That's his prosperity coming forth in your life. You meet his conditions, and you honor him. Remember, the tithe is holy, the tithe belongs to him, it's the tenth, it's his. When you do that, then you honor him, and he is going to honor you by pouring out his blessings. Prosperity is going to come forth in your life. In verse 13, Happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. For the merchandise is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She's more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand. This is what wisdom and understanding will produce. And in her left hand, riches and honor. That tells you that if you will get the wisdom and the understanding, how are you going to get it? From the Word. Remember, when you hear the Word initially, you get knowledge, revelation knowledge revealed by the Holy Spirit. Then when you put it in operation and do it, you gain spiritual understanding. When you continue to walk in it and hear and do it consistently, God will impart wisdom. And that's what He wants, for you to have wisdom to know what to do in every situation. You find that wisdom. You get that understanding. You're going to have length of days, you're going to see riches and honor are going to come upon you in your life. We see this again declared in Proverbs 7, or 4, that is, 4, 7, where it says wisdom's the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. God expects you to get wisdom. With all thy getting, get understanding. He wants you to have spiritual understanding and wisdom. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. See, God, through his word, is going to promote you as you're walking in that understanding, that spiritual wisdom. She, talking about wisdom and understanding, is going to bring you to honor. So, 
what's going to happen? You gain wisdom and understanding. It's going to promote you. It's going to bring you to honor as you take hold of doing what the Word says. We see over in Proverbs chapter 8. Proverbs 8, verse 17. Notice he says, I love them that love me. See, the way God works, when you treat him a certain way, then he's going to treat you back the same way. I love them that love me. When you walk and keep his commandments, you love him, then he's going to, start, he's going to love you and manifest himself. And those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. See, when you find God, you're going to find his honor, you're going to find his riches, you're going to find his blessings. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. So what do we need to do? Be sure that we're loving him, keeping his commandments, that we're seeking him early, not the last thing, not if we have time. We're making him priority in our life. We're putting God first place. He's not just walking my life and I want God to come along to help me whenever I have a need. No. You're going to seek him early. You're putting him first place in your life. You're studying his word. You're loving him. You're keeping his commandments. You're doing the things that he wants you to do. And he will, then you'll have riches and honor. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 16. A gracious woman retaineth honor. He wants every woman to be full of grace and favor. You should have grace coming out, favor coming out of you because you speak the word of God. You're to be like the virtuous woman. You know, you speak the word, you have law of kindness in your mouth, you're strong in the Lord, you're going forth and doing the things that God wants you to do. Gracious woman retains honor. That's what God's looking for. That means you're going to be gracious, you're going to show favor to others, you're going to be ministering to others, you're going to be carrying out whatever God wants to do. You don't live under yourself, you live under the Lord. You do the things that God is wanting you to do. Now we see in Proverbs 12, verse 9, <coughs> He says this, He that's despised and has a servant is better than he that honoreth himself <clears throat> and lacketh bread. That tells you something. Anybody that honors himself, he's making a mistake. God does not want us to give honor to ourself, have self-honor whatsoever. Instead, we are instead to be doing what God wants us to do. He's despised and has a servant's better than the guy who's honoring himself. You don't want to have self-honor. Anything that is seeking to gain honor yourself is all of the flesh, it's all of self. Instead, we want to honor the Lord, and we want God to honor us, because we've done everything unto Him. Proverbs 13, verse 18. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. That's discipline or correction. But he that regardeth the reproof, <coughs> he perceives this rebuke or correction. He's going to be honored. See, we need to be correctable. God wants us to be correctable. Some people, they're not correctable. As long as everything's going good, everything's fine, oh, they're good. And then all of a sudden you correct them, you get an attitude. They aren't doing a good thing. No, we need to regard reproof. We need to be correctable to receive God's correction when he brings it to us through his word. And we're going to be honored, as he says then. Proverbs 14, <coughs> verse 31. He that oppresses the poor reproaches his maker, but he that honors him hath mercy on the poor. You honor the Lord when you have mercy on the poor. That's why God wants us to be ready to give out. Give out and minister to people when they're poor. They want to have wisdom. You certainly don't want to give money to the drug addict. He's going to go and spend it on drugs. But once you give it to what he has need of, give him the word. If you give him something, go buy him something like for food if he needs food or whatever as you're ministering the gospel to call him to repentance. Or you have someone that's lacking or in poverty, you know, give them things that they have need of. Be wise when you're giving to people. You don't want to go for something that's not, that wouldn't be useful for them. You want to be sure it's ministering to needs in their particular life. Proverbs 15, verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom, and before honor is humility. <coughs> That means that if we're not going to be humble before the Lord, we're not going to be honored by Him. Before honor is humility. God wants every one of us to be humble before the Lord. We see it again in Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. It's lifted up and exalted. Pride. But before honor is humility. Pride always goes before a fall. We've got to eliminate pride. We've got to instead 
be humble before the Lord, submitted unto him, yielded unto him. God sees that. He will bring honor to you. We see another thing that brings honor. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 3, says, It is an honor for a man to cease from strife. You get into strife, you're not walking in God's ways. You're not going to be honored by the Lord. He wants you to share the word, but he doesn't want you to do it and get in strife. He doesn't want you to be in strife and arguments with people whatsoever. It's an honor for a man to cease from strife. You're going to be honored for, by the Lord. You're going to be doing the right thing if you cease from strife in your life. Don't allow yourself to participate. It takes two to participate. Just don't participate in it. Proverbs 21, verse 21. He that follows after righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness, and honor. What are we to follow after? Righteousness, mercy. Then you're going to get blessed. You follow God's ways, you're going to get his life. You're going to get his righteousness. You're going to get his honor. It's going to come forth in your life. Proverbs 22, over in verse 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. See, we want to be honored by God. How's it going to happen? Because we met the conditions. We're going to have humility, as we've seen. Now it's the third verse we've seen about that. And we're going to have the fear of the Lord. We've seen that before. These things are very important. Another thing we see, Proverbs 25, verse 2. It is the glory of God to conceal a, ma a thing, but is the honor of kings to search out a matter. God's word is concealed. It's got to be revealed by the Holy Spirit. It's not evident to people. It's got to be spiritually discerned. But it's the honor of kings. They get to search out a matter. Well, who are the kings? You and I are. We're kings and priests unto God. So, it's the honor of us as kings to be able to search out a matter. How are we going to search out the matter? Because we're going to study. We're going to get in the Word. <clears throat> it is an honor <clears throat> for you to be able to discover all these things as you study in the Word. You're getting revelation from God. He's going to bring forth revelation of the truth through the Holy Spirit. But that means we need to study. If you don't study, are you going to be able to get the revelation of things that God wants to bring forth? No. <coughs> Are you actually carrying out the honor of kings? No, because we're not searching out the manner and seeing what God wants to bring revelation. Some people never study, and so they never are going to discover all the things that God wants to reveal to them. We see in Proverbs 26, verse 1, As snow in summer, as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. Now, people that are foolish. Well, some, one day will bring us teaching on who's a fool. It's quite a list of things that cause a person to be a fool. And some Christians think, well, I'm not a fool, but it's the opposite of wisdom. If you don't have wisdom, you could be operating as a fool, be doing things foolish. A fool, he doesn't get any honor from God whatsoever. It's only those that are walking right with the Lord. <clears throat> and for someone who is a fool or operating foolish, don't give honor to him. It says, he that binds a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. You're not supposed to give honor to a fool. No. You only give honor to those that it's due because of the fact that they've done things that are right in the sight of the Lord. We see in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 18, Whoso keeps the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof, and he that waiteth on his master shall be honored. God wants you to wait upon your master, or this would be to observe and give heed to, in this sense, to your master, which would be your, like your employer, and you're going to be honored. You should be to submit to him. We saw how the servants are supposed to be obedient to their masters. They're supposed to carry out and doing the work that they're supposed to do. And you always do it unto the Lord. <clears throat> so be sure that you're giving heed to do what's right and do it all unto the Lord. Then you're going to be honored by God. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 23. We see another place. A man's pride will bring him low. And we see about pride again. But honor shall uphold the um, humble in spirit. Honor will uphold you. God's honor will uphold you because you are humble before the Lord. God will see. Come to your aid. Come and minister to you. Come and bring what he has need of in your life. He, he will uphold you as he says. Proverbs 31, verse 25. 
Strength and honor are her clothing. This is talking about the virtuous woman here in Proverbs 31. She's to be strong, and she doth honor, <coughs> says her clothing. <coughs> she shall rejoice in time to come, <coughs> because she's been doing all the things that God wants her to do. If we went through here and saw all the things that she's doing, I mean, she's not lazy whatsoever. Who can find a virtuous woman? It says her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband is safely trusting her. He's going to trust in her because he knows she's going to do the right thing. And he goes on and says, she'll do him good, not evil, all the days of her life. You've got to be doing your husband good. You can't be doing evil whatsoever. Seeks wool, flax, works willingly with her hands. I mean, she's, she's a worker. She's not a lazy, does nothing. No. She's like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She goes out and gets whatever she has need of. She rises while it's yet night, gives meat to her household, portion to her maidens. I mean, she makes sure that everything is taken care of. Considers the field, buys it with the fruit of her hand. She plants a vineyard. I mean, she's industrious. She's wise. She's out there doing all the things that need to be done. <coughs> Girds her loin with strength and strengthens her arms. She's not weak whatsoever. Perceives that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. See, hey, she's going to stay up as long as it needs to be to get everything done. Lays her hands to the spindle, and her ha hands hold the distaff. I'm talking about she makes her own clothes and so forth. Stretches out her hand to the poor, reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's out there ministering as well. I mean, this is someone, she's not serving herself. She's just serving the Lord and serving people. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. No, she's, she's got them all clothed. She's taking care of them, so they're not going to be lacking warmth. Makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband's known the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen, sells it, and delivers girdles under the merchants. I mean, this is, this is a virtuous woman. She's really doing everything, isn't she? Strength and honor her clothing. She rejoices. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And her tongue is the law of kindness. No, she's not mean. She's not short. She's not harsh. She's not, you know, one that speaks negative things. She looks well to the ways of her household. Eats not the bread of idleness. She's not lazy. She's a worker. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, when he prays with her. Now that's a virtuous woman. She's going to have honor. She's going to have honor from the Lord. Praise God. God wants us to be a worker, diligent, not lazy, doing what God wants, providing, ministering to every area of need, always speaking with wisdom, law of kindness, always doing the right thing. That is what God wants to come forth in our life. Isaiah chapter 29, we see down in verse <clears throat> uh, 23. When he seeth his children, the work of mine hands, in the midst of them, they shall sanctify thy name, and sanctify, he says, I'm sorry, it's verse 13, not 23. It says, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. That means the commandments of men. That means that they're just following the traditions of men and whatever men say, and they think they're okay. No, they're not. They're not keeping the commandments of the Lord. They're not okay. You know, you've got to be doing the right thing, not just what so-and-so says or what's the way we do or what we believe and all these things. It says they draw near with their mouth, but in their lips they honor me. Oh, they got the talk. They sound good. But their heart's not there. See, God's looking on our heart. You can't just go through the motions. It's got to be sincere from the heart. God is looking at our heart to see whether we're doing the right thing. You bring honor to God when your lips are speaking right and your heart is doing right. And you're also, of course, you're following not the precepts of men, you're following the precepts of the Lord because you're a doer of the word. Isaiah 42, 21. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. What's going to be honorable? The law, which is his word. And what do we follow? We follow the law of the New Testament now that we're under. <coughs> the perfect law of liberty, the law of Christ. And so you and I are going to walk in line with his word, keeping the commandments of the Lord. So you walk in, if his, 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 his laws, his word is honorable, you do them, you're going to get honored you do what he says, and then you're going to be honored before the Lord. What happened to these people? They weren't doing it. They were ignoring his word. What happened to them? They got destroyed by the enemy. They're robbed, they're spoiled, they're snared, hidden prison houses. 
They're a prey. Nobody's delivered them. They're in a mess. They're in bondage because they're not walking in the ways of the Word. If we will walk in line with His Word, God will honor us and He will bless us and He will bring us out of captivity. He will meet every need in our life. We see in Isaiah 43, verse 23, He says this, Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings, neither hast thou honored me with thy sacrifices. The point we want you to see. He's talking about them bringing their sacrifices. What kind of sacrifices do we bring today? Well, we've got to bring our sacrifices. Say, what do you mean? I thought we're not under that. I don't do that stuff. That's Old Testament. That's right. We don't do the physical sacrifice. Now we do the spiritual sacrifices. And it starts out with your body being a living sacrifice to be presented holy and acceptable to Him. And then offering up the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto His name. And with other such sacrifices, please, doing good and having fellowship with others and meeting, meeting, reaching out to meet other people's needs and ministering the Word of God to them. Otherwise, you, a sacrifice, you're giving yourself to, it takes, it's a giving out of yourself in some aspect, whether it's giving to the Lord or giving out to do good to others. That's what God wants, because our life is to be a sacrifice, a living sacrifice unto the Lord to carry out the things that He wants for us to do. And Isaiah 58, verse 13, He speaks of the fact that these ones who were not keeping the Sabbath, and remember the Old Testament, they kept the Sabbath day. Under the New Testament, we don't keep a Sabbath day. There isn't a Sabbath day in the New Testament. It's now a spiritual Sabbath that we enter into as we possess the promises of God. And he talks here about how you shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Who are we living unto? We're not living unto ourselves. We're living unto him. He died for us, remember? 2 Corinthians 5, 15, in that he died for us. That we're not to live unto ourselves. We're to live unto him. So we're going to honor him by what? Not doing our own ways, not finding our own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. We're going to do his words. We're going to do what he wants. We're going to please the Lord. We're going to speak the word of God. We're going to follow the ways of the Lord and follow him. When you do that, God's going to honor you. He's going to bring his blessings upon you in your life. Over in Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6, it says, A son honors his father, and a servant his master. That's what should be happening. If then I be a father, where's mine honor? If I be a master, where's my fear, saith the Lord of hosts? You priests that despise my name and say, wherein have you despised my name? They weren't honoring the Lord. They weren't doing the things that he wanted them to do. We got to do the things he says. And when we do that, we're honoring our heavenly father. We're honoring the Lord. And of course, when you honor him, remember, he says, then I'm going to honor you. Praise God. We see over in Matthew 15, we saw a scripture already in the Old Testament along these lines, but here we see it in Matthew 15, verse 18. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceeds all these things, the evil hearts, evil thoughts, the murders, the adulteries, fornications, thefts, fault witnesses, blasphemies. These are the things that defile a man. And so he's bringing all these things, <coughs> and he's speaking here, that these things are going to defile us instead of bringing forth what God wants in our life. So, He wants us to be sure that we're doing the things that He wants. We're not going to bring evil things out of us. They defile us and they hinder us from accomplishing what God wants in our life. Now, we see a scripture over in Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, over in verse 10. He says, Honor thy mother and thy father. Whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Man, you curse them, you don't want to. you got to say, well, they were evil. Forgive them and still honor them. Forgive them and let go of what they've done. See, well, they don't deserve anything. Remember, you're to give people what they have need of, not what they deserve. That's why you love your enemies, you bless those that curse you, you do good to those that have done evil to you, you, you know, pray for those that pers persecute you or despitefully use you. You always give out what people have need of. You don't give them what they deserve. Otherwise, you became a judge. So, forgive them. Don't curse your father or mother. Otherwise, it shows it brings curses of death upon a person in some capacity. 
John chapter 5, verse 23. What does God want? He wants us to honor the Lord. It says, all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, honors not the Father, which has sent him. We've got to honor Jesus. We're going to honor him by doing his word and carrying out the things, following him. He's the head of the church. We need to be obedient and do the things that he's called us to do. Verse 41, he says, I receive not honor from men. That's what Jesus said. Why is anybody receiving honor from men? We shouldn't receive honor from men. We should only receive honor from God. Jesus says, I'm not, I don't receive any honor from men. I'm not going to take any of that whatsoever. He goes on in verse 44, and he says, How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that comes from God only? See, they just wanted to honor themselves. I want to get honor from the people. We see a lot of people today. They want people to honor them. We see it in the church world today. They want them to lift them up and think that they're something great. That's a mistake. No, we only want the honor that comes from God. We don't want to be receiving honor one of another and, you know, pat you on the back and you're all these kind of things. No. All the honor goes to God. In John chapter 8, see, if we meet all these things, remember, when you honor God, do the right things He wants, He's going to honor you. John 8, 49, Jesus said, I am not a devil, but I honor my Father, and you do dishonor me. They thought He had a devil. No. He was honoring the Father in all the things that He was doing. If you don't, you know, if you're not honoring the Father, you're going to be dishonoring Him. And then you're going to see destructive things come. We can't think that we're going to see God's blessing if we're not honoring the Father. Jesus answered, He said, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. What does that tell you? Any honor that's going to self, it's nothing. It's wasted. It's going nowhere. Honor given to, you know, uh, wanting to always take honor and get honor, it's nothing. It's not of God whatsoever. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he's your God. We want honor from the real source, from God, that's going to bring his blessings in our life. We see another scripture over in John 12, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my Father honor. God will honor those that are serving Jesus. How are we serving Jesus? If we're doing his word, if we're carrying out the ministry that he's called us to do as he's the head of the church, you and I are part of the body of Christ. We are to do the things that he wants us to do. We're to be a servant. The greatest is the servant of all. He wants you to be serving the Lord. How will you serve the Lord? Preach the gospel. Reach out to people. Minister the gospel. Teach people the truth. Minister, do the, do the things we're all supposed to do. Cast out the demons. Minister healing. Go out and make disciples of all nations. Give them the truth. Stand up for what is right. Serve the Lord. Be a vessel for God to throw th flow through. Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, we pick up in verse 6. It says, Who will render to every man according to his deeds. Everybody's going to reap according to what they've been doing, your works. To them who by patient continuance, they've been steadfast. This is the word hopamone in the Greek, which means to be steadfast or constant. They've been steadfast and constant in doing things, in well-doing, doing the right, doing the things of God. They're seeking for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. Well, that's what we should be seeking for. That's why it's so important for you to be steadfast in well-doing, which is doing the work of the Lord. When you do that, you're going to be seeking for glory, honor, and immortality, and for eternal life, and you're going to get it. That's why we've got to get our eyes on the big picture of what God wants to bring forth in our life. Don't get your eyes on anything of this world. This world's going down. You need to want to seek after the things of the Lord. Verse 10. Glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good, the Jew first and also to the Gentile. So you're working good, you're doing the things that God wants. And this particular word, agathos, is a goodness that comes from a heart that is good and is shown by outward works coming forth out of you, showing the fact that you've got a good heart evidenced by the fruit coming forth in your life. You're going to be working good. Glory and honor and peace is going to be given to us. We see over in Romans chapter 9, verse 21. 
It says, that's not the potter, and that's the Lord. Power, this is the Greek word exousia, which means authority, as Young's brings out in the Young's translation, which corrects King James' errors, over the clay, that's us, of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. And God has authority to make one to honor and one to dishonor? Yeah, because God's doing the work in all of us. Well, who is the one that gets honor, is made honor, and who's the one that's made dishonor? Is it just God arbitrarily deciding? Is it God who's always selected you for dishonor and you for honor and you for dishonor and that's because I decided it and that's the way it's going to be arbitrarily? No, not at all. There's some people that even teach that. They think that God's already decided, pre-planned, predestined everything that's supposed to happen for, and it doesn't have anything to do with your choices. It's going to automatically happen. It's a big lie. False teaching. 2 Timothy 2.19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand sure, having the seal. The Lord knows them that are His. Well, that's something that's important. If you're one of His, then He knows you. Everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Yes, we're going to be right with the Lord. We're not going to be walking in the ways of unrighteousness. This word iniquity here is adakia, which means unrighteousness. In a great house, there's not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Now we're talking about these vessels again. God's going to make some honor and some dishonor. What determines what happens? It all determines what you do, what you do in your life. Because God is going to accomplish the work in you. If you get the work done, you're going to be a vessel of honor. It says, if a man therefore purge himself, that means it's your responsibility and my responsibility to purge ourselves. This means to cleanse out thoroughly. It's his Greek word, ekkathaero, which means to cleanse out or cleanse thoroughly, as you see in the lower window where we get the meanings. If you will cleanse yourself out thoroughly from all this, from these, what? All this unrighteousness, this iniquity, you're going to be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet, able for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Notice. What's God want to produce as he's making you a vessel of honor through you having cleansed yourself? He wants you to be sanctified. He wants you to be holy before the Lord. He wants you to be able for the master's use because he wants to use you. And he wants you prepared in every good work because he's going to accomplish the good works of God through you because you are going to be a vessel. Therefore, he doesn't arbitrarily decide, I'm going to make you a vessel of honor and you a vessel of dishonor. No. It all depends on what you do because he's going to do the work according to you accomplishing the work and cleansing yourself, purging yourself. We need to cleanse ourselves of everything. This is why we've got to deal with all the works of the flesh, and this is why we all have to cast out all the demons. 2 Corinthians 7 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us, at you and me, cleanse ourselves from what? All filthiness of what? Of the flesh and spirit. Filthiness of the flesh are all the fleshly works that have to be dealt with, which is all sin. Also, there's filthiness of the spirit, <coughs> which is what? What's the filthiness of the spirit? No filthiness in our spirit. It's the spiritual filthiness of the demons, unclean spirits that are in us. That's why we've got to cast them all out. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So God wants us to cleanse ourselves. You want to become a vessel of honor? Then get the stuff cast out of you and deal with every fleshly work. Get rid of all the filthiness. Be about the work of casting out the network of spirits that need to be driven out of every area of our life. And that is important. Many people are not engaging in deliverance consistently. They just get a little deliverance and feel better, and they're not continuing. It's a mistake. We want to consistently be casting out the clean house on everything that is in us. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. Now, what does this mean? The word preferring, when you look this up in the Greek, it is a word which means to go before and show the way, or to, like to go before and lead, or to go to before as a leader. So it's talking about in honor, you're going to go before and show people the way. You're going to act like a leader because you're going to show them the word of God. That's, it's not talking about preferring one or just to, you know, treat them good or whatever. All. It doesn't have anything to do with that. It has the fact that you are going to be going for to show people the way by giving them the word. You're teaching them the truth. You're teaching them this is the way you need to walk in. And you're being a leader. You're guiding them. You're showing them the way. That shows honor to them. 
not just preferring them, oh, I'll be nice to this person. No. You want to be giving them the right way and leading them and guiding them because what do they need to do? They need to get in the way of the Lord. They need to walk God's ways. That's what you're going to do in honor, going before them, <coughs> showing the way as a leader to lead them in the right paths. <coughs> in uh, Romans 13, verse 7, it says this, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tributes due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. A fool doesn't get honor. Someone who's not walking right with God is not going to get honor. It's those that have met the conditions are going to get honor. We're going to show honor one to another. It's the Lord working through us to minister to people's needs when they have met the conditions for being honored before the Lord. And first, because he's going to use us to minister to people, see? 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talking about the body of Christ. Down here in verse 23, talks about the members of the body. And which we th those that we think less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts, more abundant comeliness. Our comely parts have no need, but God's tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to the part that lacks. So people that are lacking, we want to give honor to them. We want to minister the things that they have need of to help them. Now, we're not going to pet their sin. We're not going to you know, let them continue on their ways. No, we're going to give them the truth. We're going to exhort them in the right way. We're going to call them to repentance. It's not just, uh, you know, putting up with them and, and then just letting them continue on their evil ways. No, you're going to bring forth truth. You're going to call them to the truth. You're going to call them to repentance. You're going to direct them and lead them in the right way. That's what we're talking about. There should be no schism in the body. The bo members should have the same care one for another because we're going to reach out to member, to meet, minister to them. When mem one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. When member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. If someone gets honored, we should be rejoicing. We shouldn't be envious or jealous or thinking, well, I wish I was honored, and I'm kind of upset because I didn't get honored, and they got honored. And that's a bad spirit. Don't let that get a hold of you. Now, you rejoice when someone just gets honored. If you say, well, I haven't seen that honor in my life. Well, just keep on following the Lord. He'll bring it to you. Your day will come in due season as we meet the conditions and do the things that God wants us to do. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6, verse 2. Honor thy father and mother. Again, that's the first commandment with promise. That it may be well with thee, and thou mightest live long on the earth. We saw that before. God wants us to be honoring our mother and our father. Don't make that mistake and not do that. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3. This is the will of God, even your sanctification, you should abstain from fornication. God does not want Christians to be involved in fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Remember, the body belongs to the Lord. The body is for the Lord, not for fornication, it says in 1 Corinthians 6. We cannot allow our bodies to be glorifying God. We're to glorify, glorify Him in our spirit and in our body. Therefore, we're not glorifying God if we're allowing ourselves to fall into these kind of things. We should know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor. So when we do what God wants, then we're going to be honored and blessed. We also see over in uh, 1 Timothy, it talks about honoring widows. Now we're talking about real widows from, God, from the standpoint of the scriptures. Honor widows that are widows indeed. So that means they have nobody to help them take care of them. It says, any widow have children or nephews, let it first learn to show piety at home or quite their parents as good and acceptable before God. Honors that are real, uh, widows that are honored, the real widows, we need to honor. We need to minister to and help and minister to the areas of need in their life. We also see it even talks about those that labor in the word and are elders. The elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. Scripture says you don't muzzle out the ox that treads out the corn, but the labor is worthy of his reward. That's why as we minister unto the needs of the church, bringing in the tithes and offerings, which is what the purpose it is, not only for ministering to those who are laboring the word, but also to bring forth the, you know, preaching the gospel and carrying out all the different things that we do. God wants us to, of course, as he says, that uh, the elders counted to be worthy of double honor. Praise God. We see another place in 1 Timothy 6.1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. 
See, if you're not giving honor to your master, you're actually blaspheming the doctrine in the name of God, is what it says, because you're not doing the things he wants. He wants you to show your masters worthy of all honor. You show honor to people. Treat them with respect. Treat them right, the way that God wants. We also see Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. He says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but the whoremongers and the adulterers God will judge. We can't be living with people. We can't be having fornication. We can't be doing these kind of things. Amazing how many Christians are following this way. You know, it's amazing. They shouldn't be doing this. It should not be happening. It's honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. That also means the marriage bed is to be undefiled. It doesn't mean you're going to carry out the sodomy and all the ways of the, uh, the world out there and think that just because I'm married that it's okay. No. If it's defiled, it's defiled. You don't carry out those kind of things. Whoremongers and adulterers, of course, they're going to get judged. We see another thing. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. The trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So what's to be also showing honor? Your faith. Your faith. Your faith is though you're to pass the test. You're to triumph over all the trials that come against your faith. Your faith is what's precious, and it's going to be tried with fire. But you're going to come forth because you're going to walk by faith. You're going to speak faith. You're going to do the word. You're going to carry out what God says to see the promises come to pass. Now regarding dealing with people, the Bible does tell us, honor all men, honor everybody, show, show respect to them, treat them right, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. We should be honoring him because of the office he holds, not that we may not agree with what he's doing, but nonetheless, we're going to honor him because of the fact that he has hold a particular office as a king or a leader in a particular country. Otherwise, we may not agree with him and may not want to see things get changed, but we can't be disrespectful. We can't be showing disrespect. That is wrong. That is not what the way God wants us to do things. We also see in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Husbands, give honor to your wife. Don't treat them with disrespect. That's one of the weaker vessels. And being heirs together the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. If you don't treat your wife right, it's going to affect your prayer life. Your prayers are going to be hindered. Things are going to be hindered in your life. Your heirs together, the grace of life. Therefore, you got to, of course, dwell with them according to what? According to knowledge. You're going to be a doer of the word. You're not going to compromise it. You're going to walk according to knowledge. You're putting the word of God first place in your life, in your marriage, and all that you're going to do. So, giving honor to the wife doesn't mean just appeasing her. No, you're walking according to the word. You're going to be showing her the right way. You're not going to be compromising. Nonetheless, you're going to give honor to that wife, and you're not going to be disrespectful to that person whatsoever. We also see over in 2 Peter, another principle that shows us what's going to bring honor to us. Look what it says about Jesus. He received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Honor and glory came. Why? Because he was well pleased. If God's well pleased with us, we're going to see God's honor and his blessing will come upon us. <clears throat> now, if we do some wrong things, we're going to see dishonor. We'll look at it before, a few scriptures before we conclude tonight of how dishonor can come. We see in Psalms 35, verse 26, Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice at my hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Anybody that's coming against another person to cause them hurt or shame or do some kind of evil thing against them or to magnify themselves against them in some capacity, they're going to they're have shame and dishonor because they're not treating the person walking in love the way they should be treating them. In Proverbs chapter 6, verse 32, Whoso commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He didn't realize what he's doing. He thinks he's just having a good time. No, he destroys his own soul. He that doeth, he destroys his soul. 
A wound dishonor and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away. Dishonor. You cannot allow that to happen. You ever, if you have involved in that, you confess your sin, you repent, and never are going to do such a thing ever again. You're not ever going to allow that to happen. How about the homosexuals? Homosexuals are dis bringing forth dishonor and shame upon themselves. Look what it says in Romans 1.24. God gave them up to the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. A man was not made for a man. A man or a woman are to be together in marriage. We see all the abominations going on in this nation with all no, more states and continuing on in gay marriage, which is absolutely a, a great mistake. They change the truth of God into a lie. They ignore the word. They worship and serve the creature more than the creator. They're all out for what they want. They're totally deceived by the enemy. They've got a reprobate mind. This caused God, God gave them up to vile affections. The word vile means dishonored, if you notice, in the lower window. Dishonoring and disgraceful affections. <laughs> well, I feel like I have an attraction towards something. That's demons where they're in the person. It's not God. It's not true affection from God in a, that's given us. It's demons. The woman even changed their natural use into that which is against nature. They're dishonoring themselves, and of course, they're going to have curses of death and destruction come upon them. Romans 2, verse 23. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God. Now remember, we're not under the Old Testament law. The law has changed. You don't know the scripture, this is important. We've got these people out there that are keeping the Old Testament law, going back to the Hebrew roots and all these things. Great mistake. Making mistakes left and right. Look what it says in Hebrews 7.12. 7, For the priesthood being changed, there's made of necessity a change of the law. Now, other people think, well, I'm in the New Testament under grace. I'm not under law. I don't have any law. I can do whatever I want. No, they missed it too. Grace came through Jesus Christ, brought the New Testament, but does the law, have, does the New Testament have law? Sure does. It's got the law of Christ, it's got the law of liberty, the perfect law of liberty, the law of the spirit of life in Christ. So there's a change in the law, not a doing away with law, but we're not on the Old Testament law any longer. No. These people that go back and keep the Old Testament ways, they're making a great mistake. Romans 2.23 it says, breaking the law, you dishonor God. So if we're breaking New Testament law by not doing what His Word says, not obeying the New Testament commandments, what are we doing? We're dishonoring God. Are we going to be honored? It means you're going to walk in sin. Are you going to get the honor of God? No. Sin has no dominion over us. God wants us to turn away from all sin and conquer and strive against it in our life. We also see a scripture. Many Christians haven't apparently seen this scripture. Women have long hair, which is their covering, and men do not have long hair in God's sight. 1 Corinthians 11, 14, does not even nature itself teach you that if a man had long hair, it's a shame, it's a dishonor to him and a disgrace. I don't know what Christians apparently haven't even seen this verse, or they've ignored it, or wiped it out of their Bible, or what. There's a lot of people, unfortunately, that are not following the way of the Lord. We got to be doing what God wants us to do. We got to be obedient. James chapter two. Of course, the opposite is, you know, women having like shaved heads or almost short or down to nothing. That's what a lot of lesbians do. You know, and there's nothing wrong. You don't have to have real long hair, but we're talking about real short hair. That's the devil working there. God made the hair the glory of the woman. Remember the covering. James two six. You despise the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? Do they not blaspheme that worthy name by the which you're called? They were despising or dishonoring the poor. You see, God wants us to minister to people's needs. Have wisdom in how you minister to them. You want to bring them to come to the course to the place of walking in the way of the Lord. But you also want to remember the poor to minister to them. Remember, when you lend to the poor, when you give to the poor, you, are, you have pity upon them. We'll show you the scripture. It's in Proverbs 19, 17. You're actually lending to the Lord. So don't think that you're giving something away that you're not going to get back. He that has pity upon the poor lends unto the Lord. 
And he which is given, he'll pay him back again. God will bring it back to you. So you're not doing without anything. You're just giving out, lending to the Lord to help minister, because God does reign upon the just and the unjust, remember, and even those that aren't walking in his ways. So what does God want? He wants us to honor him. If we look at all these ways, these are all critical for God to bring forth honor in our life. And many times we saw riches and honor together. Prosperity, blessing, God's honor now, and also certainly rewarded in the life to come, is all going to be because we've walked in his ways and we've done the things that are right in his sight. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that riches and honor come from you. Therefore, I'm going to do what your word says so that I am honored by you. I'm not going to honor people because of them being important or because of them being great or distinguished or in particular positions. No, I'm going to honor people that are deserving of an honor, allowing you to flow through me to minister to them, not because of their who they are or their position. I'm going to honor people that are older and have the fear of God. I'm not going to ever do anything that is unrighteous to gain honor from another. I will honor my father. I will honor my mother. And I forgive them for anything that they might have done in the name of Jesus. I'm going to honor you by speaking right words, by being faithful, by being obedient, by seeking for knowledge and understanding and wisdom, by seeking after you, by walking in your commandments, by having my heart lifted up in the ways of the Lord, by having the fear of the Lord, by praising and worshiping you, by engaging in spiritual warfare, to bring your vengeance upon the enemies, by being a tither, by loving you, by seeking you early, by being gracious to others, by receiving reproof and correction, by being merciful to others, by having humility. I will not have pride, and I will get honor as I cease from strife, and I follow righteousness and mercy. And because I can search out a thing and get revelation, honor comes to me as a king for you to bring revelation to me. I will not honor a fool. I will not honor those that are walking contrary to your ways. But I will give them the word to lead them in the path to come to repentance. I will also honor my employer by treating him with respect. I will be humble. I am going to have my heart right before you, not just speaking right words, and my heart's far from you. But no, it'll be from my heart that I do everything unto you. As I do your word, which is honorable, it will bring honor to me. I am going to honor you by offering the spiritual sacrifices, my body a living sacrifice, praising and worshiping you, doing good and ministering to others. I'm not going to do my own ways. I'm not going to seek my own pleasure. I'm not going to speak my own words. I'm going to do what you want me to do. And as I honor Jesus, I'm honoring the Father. As I serve you, then I'll be honored. As I'm steadfast and well-doing and working good, I'll be honored. I'm going to be a vessel of honor because I'm cleansing myself thoroughly of all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, all the unrighteousness, so that I'm going to be sanctified, a vessel of honor, meet for the master's use, prepared for every good work. And I'm going to go before and show the way as a leader to other people as I bring the word to them. I'm not going to compromise. I'm representing the Lord, and I'm actually showing honor to them 
by pointing them in the right direction, even when I'm bringing correction to them, showing what they need of. I'm going to give honor to those who have honor due. Those in the body of Christ that are lacking, I'm going to give honor to them to help minister to the needs in their life. I'm going to abstain from fornication. I will possess my vessel in sanctification and honor. I will honor widows. I will show honor to my masters. I will show honor in the marriage bed. I will walk in faith. My faith will be found in praise and honor because I will overcome attacks of the enemy. I will all honor all men. I will honor the king because of the office he holds. I will not be disrespectful. I will give honor to if I have a wife. And I will give honor to the Father and to Jesus by doing the word, keeping the commandments, so that the Lord will be well pleased. I will not magnify myself against another person. I will not commit adultery. I will not break your word. I will not do anything that's wrong, contrary to your word, or I dishonor you. I am making my decision. I'm a hearer and a doer of your word. And I know as I honor you, you're going to honor me. And I'm going to get riches and honor and blessing and immortality and eternal life. Thank you, Lord. I will be obedient to your word, and I will be honored by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God wants us to be honored by him. He wants to do it. We just have to meet his conditions. Praise God. He will do it as we meet the conditions of the Lord. Father, we thank you and praise you for all you brought forth. We will be hearers and doers of this word, and we thank you. We know that you perform your word, and we thank you for your honor manifest in our life because we have honored you in all of the ways of the Word of God. Thank you for much fruit as we hear and do this Word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.